This is lesson one in the circular motion topic. It's on angular velocity and the radian as a measure of angle. So first off, I wanna show you a few images. Which of the following do you think causes us to move through space at the highest speed? Do you think it's our rotation on the surface of the Earth, which takes 24 hours to complete one whole rotation? Do you think it's our orbit of the sun, which takes a year to complete one rotation? Or do you think it's the fact that we orbit the center of the galaxy, which takes 250 million years? Which one do you think us to call, which one do you think causes us to move through space at the highest speed? So before we answer that later, first of all, we need to think of a new way to measure angles. Now, so far, you've always used degrees to measure angles, and you know that there are 360 degrees in a circle. So going all the way around, we've got 360 degrees. That is completely arbitrary and has no real scientific basis. So we're going to use a much better measurement of angles. It will take you a while to get used to it, but it is much better and you'll come to realise that. And that is the radian. Now, when we have an angle of one radian in a circle, an angle of one radian times the radius means that the length of the arc is equal to the radius. So when we do the angle in radians times the radius, we get the length of that arc. This is much, much, much more scientific and is very useful later on. So some formula we're going to use is that the arc length is equal to theta times r. Theta must be measured in radians, not degrees, otherwise it won't work. So rearranging that, we get the angle in radians is equal to the arc length over the radius. And what we also notice is that there are two pi radians in a circle. So two pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. You can recognize that because the arc length of a whole circle, so all the way around, that's the circumference. The circumference is 2 pi r. So 2 pi r divided by r gives you 2 pi. So that would be for the full circle. If you want to convert between uh, degrees and radians, first of all, to go from degrees to radians, you would times by pi over 180. To go from radians to degrees, you would times by 180 over pi. Let's have a go at some quick fire questions now. So first off, I'll show you how to do it. What is 240 degrees in radians? What you want to do is you want to use the conversion factor. So we are wanting to go from degrees to radians. So we're going to do 240 times by pi over 180. And you should get 4 thirds pi uh, or 4.2 radians. So have a go at the others and I'll show you the answers in a moment. Okay, so next up we're going to look at angular velocity. Now angular velocity tells you how quickly an object moves through an angle. Velocity that we've looked at before, linear velocity, tells you how quickly it moves over a distance. Angular velocity tells you how much of an angle an object does in a certain time. So in, uh, omega is angular velocity, and instead of distance on the top, it's angle on the top, it's angle divided by time. So here we've got uh, an object moving from here to here, moving around in a circle, moving in circular motion. It has travelled through an angle of theta here, which we will measure in radians. And we can then work out its angular velocity from that. So omega, this is a Greek letter called omega. It looks a bit like a W. Uh, omega is the angular velocity. Theta is the angle it moves through in a certain time of t. Uh, and we measure that in radians. And t measured in seconds is the time to move through uh, that angle. There's another equation to measure angular velocity. And that is omega equals 2 pi over capital T. It's basically the same thing. It's a more specific example of it. This time, instead of a lowercase t, we've got a capital T. That capital T is the time period, it's the time it takes to complete one full rotation. Now, when an object goes through one full rotation, the angle it has gone through is 2 pi. So this is just a specific example of this equation here, where the angle is 2 pi because it's one full rotation. Therefore, the time is the time for that one full rotation, which we call the time period, and we use a capital T for. And finally, third equation, we've got omega equals 2 pi f. f is the frequency or the inverse of the time period. It's the number of full rotations the object does per second. So we've got one, two, three new equations there. So let's try and use those now to answer which one of those objects we looked at at the beginning has the largest angular, angular velocity. Is it the Earth's rotation? Is it the Earth's orbit of the sun? Or is it the solar system's orbit around the uh, Milky Way galaxy. So those are the time periods. You're going to have to convert those into seconds and then use the equation here to work out the angular velocity. So give that a go and I'll show the answers in a second. 
So three answers there. We can see that the largest angular velocity by some distance is the Earth's rotation. So 7.3 times 10 to the minus 5 radians per second, significantly higher angular velocity than the solar system's orbit around the centre of the galaxy. That's a tiny angular velocity. It only does 8.0 times 10 to the minus 16 radians every single second. That's tiny. So now we're going to try and relate together linear velocity and angular velocity. Angular velocity being measured uh, in radians per second, linear velocity in meters per second. Angular velocity is omega, linear velocity, uh, linear velocity v. So we've got angular velocity measured in radians per second and calculated with that equation, theta divided by t. And we've got linear velocity measured in meters per second, and that's calculated by doing distance or really displacement over t. And we're going to try and relate our omegas and our v's together now. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to times both sides of this equation by r. And that's going to leave me with r omega equals r theta divided by t. Now thinking about the geometry we looked at at the start, we notice that when I do theta, which is the angle in radians, theta, times the radius, r, I get the arc length. The arc length is the distance the object has moved. If it has moved from here to here, then it has moved through this distance here. So r theta becomes my s. So that leaves me with r omega equals s over t. And I can see that s over t is equal to v. So r omega equals v. So we have a new equation here. r omega equals v. And what I can also say is that because omega is 2 pi over t, I can say that v equals 2 pi r over t, where t here is the time period because here I'm saying 2 pi so the time for a full rotation. So two new equations there. So now we're going to try and use those to answer which has got the largest linear velocity. Is it the rotation of the earth? Is it the orbit of the earth around the sun? Or is it the uh, rotation of the solar system around the center of the galaxy? So use the angular velocities we got before and use or oh, you could use those or you could use the fact that I've given you the time periods again here and use the equations from the previous slide to work out which one gives us the largest linear velocity. So the Earth is 470 meters per second. The orbit of the Earth around the Sun is 30,000 meters per second. And the orbit of the solar system around the galaxy means that we move at 760,000 meters per second. So we are moving incredibly quickly around the center of the galaxy. In fact, we're moving pretty quickly on the surface of the spinning Earth, but nowhere near as quickly as we are moving together with the Sun around the galaxy. And so what we can actually do is we can compare the speeds, the, the linear velocities this time, of our rotation, our orbit, and our solar system's orbit. And it's quite astonishing how much quicker the Sun orbiting the Milky Way is compared to us rotating. And you can see it here if you watch these. So there you can see the speeds to, to scale of each other how quickly that one is compared to this one. So let's try a couple of multiple choice questions. Here I've got a model car moving in a circular path of radius 0 0.8 meters at an angular speed of pi over two radians per second. What is its displacement from point P six seconds after passing P? So give it a go, pause the video. The answer was C. So how do we do that? Well, we had the angular velocity equation, which is omega equals theta over T. I'm then going to rearrange that to work out theta, because I want to work out how much angle will it do after that much time, knowing that I know the angular velocity. So theta equals omega times t. Uh, omega is pi over 2, that's the angular velocity, and t is 6.0, so multiply those two together, and that will give me the angle as being 3 pi. So after, three, so after 6 seconds, it will have gone through 3 pi radians. So it started at p, so after 6 seconds, it will have done 3 pi. I know that one full rotation is 2 pi, so it's still got a pi radians to go. So that would be half a circle to do that next pi radians, it means meaning it will end up there. And the displacement from there to p is 1.6, it's the diameter of the, of the circle. Another question now, what is the angular speed of a car wheel of diameter 0.400 meters when the speed of the car is 108 kilometers per hour? So this time we're sort of relating angular velocities and linear velocities. So we're going to use this equation, v equals omega r. 
I'll rearrange it because I want to work out the angular speed, so I want to work out omega. So I want to work out omega, it will be v over r. Now I need to know what v and r are in uh, standard units. So uh, v is going to be 108 times 1,000 because it's kilometers, divided by 60 times 60, or 3,600 because it's hours, and that gives me velocity is 30 meters per second. The radius will be a half of the diameter. The diameter was 0 0.4, so the radius will be 0 0.2 meters. And then I'm going to substitute both of those into there, and that will give me an angular velocity of 30 divided by 0 0.2, which is equal to 150 radians per second. So the answer should be B.